India's first interplanetary mission, Mars Orbiter Mission or Mangalyaan, is flying a very special atom and molecule analyzer. And I have with me a person who has heritage from India's Chandrayaan-1 mission, Anil Bharadwaj, who flew two instruments on Chandrayaan-1, that mission which gave India some fabulous results. Anil, what are you flying on the Mars Orbiter mission this time? On the Mars Orbiter mission, we have an instrument called MENCA, which stands for Mars Exospheric Neutral Composition Analyzer. It's basically an instrument to detect the neutrals, basically atoms and molecules in the upper atmosphere and exosphere of Mars. So essentially you will be looking whether there are atoms like nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen or, or what are you looking there? Uh, we are looking at uh, lighter species like hydrogen, helium, then carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, uh, then carbon monoxide, CO, CO2 and N2 and oxygen. But this is expected you will find there. So what is, what is the new thing you are likely to find? See, in the case of Mars, there is no observations available about 200 kilometers in situ observations, okay? So this will be the first instrument which will provide information about the densities and the composition in the upper atmosphere, 200 kilometers and above. Meaning 200 kilometers above Mars, above the those, of those, the those, those uh, readings are not available. not available. So that is what is exciting you? Right, right. Because we are going to observe it for the first time or basically measure it for the first time. See, India is also looking for methane on Mars. Will your instrument, which is also looking for molecules, be able to find methane in the regions where you're looking for? Uh, as you know, the orbit of the uh, Mars Orbiter mission of India, the periapsis lies somewhere around 370 kilometers and apoapsis lies around 80,000 kilometers. The methane is a molecule uh, which is basically coming from the surface of Mars and as it comes above maybe 100 kilometers and above, it gets it largely get dissociated. So chances of it getting detected at 300 kilometers and above is quite small. So it is quite rare that we'll be able to see methane, but its dissociated components, yes, you can see carbon, you can see CH2 or CH3. There is excitement that a comet will strike Mars. Does that give you an opportunity to find out something exciting? Yes, we are quite excited about that because this will be a rare opportunity or I can say it is actually an added advantage or bonus that we'll be actually measuring the composition of a comet if we are able to fly the MOM through the comma or the comet tail. And this will be very unique because otherwise you have to make a special spacecraft to do this kind of missions. But it is something like an opportunity which is automatically coming and that will be an added advantage in addition to what we are looking at the Mars. So we fast tracked the mission, so now we are getting one bonus for that. Is that right. correct? Right, absolutely right, yes. It's an extra bonus for us. And, and, and what do you expect from that? What do you expect in the tail of the comet to find? Uh, comets generally are uh, watery bodies, so they have large amount of uh, water vapor, H2O you can say. Something like close to 80% is water. And then you have uh, molecules like uh, CO2, CO, you have methane, you have ammonia, you can have uh, CH3OH or H2CO and things like that. So we would uh, expect to see a much different composition compared to what we are expecting to see in the exosphere of Mars. Similar instrument was flown on Chandrayaan-1, but in that instrument, the Indian scientists forgot to switch it on for control experiments. Are you making the same mistake in Mars mission or have you learned something? No, in the uh, Mars Orbiter missions, we are making it on right from in the Earth-bound phase itself. So when we are, uh, what you call, making uh, orbits around the Earth, there'll be something like uh, 10 orbits or more than that, we are making it on both at the perihelion as well as the apogee. And then when we leave the Earth and go towards the Mars, which will be something like 10 months of journey, we are making on the Manka instrument uh, once in a while, roughly like once or twice a month. This will help us uh, to get the information about uh, the performance of the instrument as well as the composition of the exosphere of the Earth as well as en route. This all is going to help us to, s to know what we are going to see or what we see on the Mars. It has to be quite different compared to what we see in the case of Earth. So essentially your instrument will be like tasting what is the elements in the atmosphere. Yes, it is, uh, it is, you can say nose or you can say tongue uh, of the mission. So, and, and, and that will give us what is the composition of the very thin atmosphere on Mars. Right, right. 
precisely. Will yes. it tell us anything about life on Mars? Uh, not particularly, in, I should say that, because uh, this is actually looking at the molecules right now. But it is going to address one very important scientific objective, which is to know how the exosphere or atmosphere of Mars is escaping. Okay. Since we have an orbit which starts on somewhere around 350 kilometers to 80,000 kilometers, and since we are making measurements at different radial distances, we will be having a profile okay, of the composition along with the density distribution. And there are uh, what are called uh, theories which suggest that if you reach a critical height, uh, which is something like a gravitational binding energy, and your molecules have energy higher than that, they will be escaping. So using this kind of unique observations of Menka, we will be able to tell what is the escape rate of the upper atmosphere of Mars, which has implications on how various uh, molecules have escaped on the Mars. Tomorrow, if humans were to colonize Mars, the, the studies which you do through your instrument, Menka, will that help in uh, giving information if, if how and when Mars can be colonized? Uh, that will be slightly different because we are not going too close to the surface. We are all confined to somewhere around 350 kilometers. Probably later on in the mission phase, we may go to 250 or 200 kilometers. Below that, the chances are less. So what we are actually studying is the upper atmosphere of Mars. If the mission would have gone much lower in the atmosphere, we would have really sampled the distribution of the gases there. That would have helped us to know what atmosphere we will be when we really go for colonization on the Mars. So what next for you? Are there other instruments you are planning for interplanetary missions which India may undertake? Yes, we are working on Chandyan 2 mission. As you know, Chandyan 2 has uh, all the three phases. It has an orbiter, it has a lander and a rover. We are developing instruments on the orbiter, we are developing instruments for the lander. Uh, and then uh, we are also talking about uh, mission to uh, study the sun, that is the Aditya L1 mission. So we have instruments uh, which are shortlisted, which we are now focusing on developing them to study the sun. There is a lot of expectation because you did very well in Chandrayaan 1. There is a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. Are you going to Definitely, yes. So that was Anil Bharadwaj telling us that his instruments will perform and that he will do well when in Mars orbit, looking for both atoms, molecules, and also trying to see what kind of stuff may lie in the comet if it comes through the Mars orbiter mission's path. With camera person Alphonse, Pallav Bagla for NDTV.